So, you've heard about Pokemon Nuzlocke. So your friends talk about it. You've heard of this interesting way to play Pokemon in a more difficult format. But you don't really know exactly what it is. You've never done it before. You want to try it out. Well, I am here to help you guys out. What is up, everybody? My name is Sane. I am your Night and Protector. I am a Pokemon YouTuber specifically specializing in Pokemon Nuzlocke. Um, among the many on YouTube who, is, who specifies in Nuzlocke and Pokemon Challenge Runs. And for this video today, I'm going to give you guys a breakdown on how a Nuzlocke is going to look and how you should start your Nuzlocke. I'm going to recommend a game, or two games that I think are the best for starting off in the nuzlocke which is Fire Red and Leaf Green Generation 3 is a very well-balanced generation. It's very familiar, it's very easy to emulate, and very accessible to a lot of people. So first off, let's go over the Nuzlocke rules. So typical Nuzlocke rules that most people follow We've got two different rule sets. You've got the typical ones, and then you've got some hardcore rules to add some challenge to people. Now, if you're doing your first Nuzlocke, I don't necessarily recommend doing hardcore rules. There's some things to get used to, such as pivoting, um, getting used to knowing the fact that Pokemon that faints won't be allowed anymore, you know, items in battle. There's certain things you might not be used to yet, so don't be don't be afraid to start off with some easier rule sets, um, not doing not jumping straight into hardcore rule sets. You know, nothing 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 wrong with that. So let's go over some of the basic Nuzlocke rules. First off, the first encounter of every route or every area is the only Pokemon usable in battle. So what does this mean? So when you go on to Route 1, you run into a Rattata. That Rattata is the only Pokemon on Route 1 that you can catch that you can use in battle. And I say lose, use in battle because for games like Fire Red, you might have to catch some extra Pokemon to complete the Pokedex to get some items such as Flash early on. And you might need a Pokemon to use HMs, and you're likely cut to, to catch and use Pokemon for that. However, catching any uh, any extra Pokemon for battle is where the line is drawn. So it's only the first Pokemon you encounter. So if that Rattata has not very good nature and doesn't have the Guts ability, you might want to reset your game, but that's the one you're stuck with. And that's how the rules go. It's always the first Pokemon you run into is the one you get. You must nickname all of your Pokemon, so you get attached to them, so that if they faint, which is the next rule, you get attached to them, which is the next rule. If the Pokemon faints, it's con it's considered dead or unusable for the rest of the run, and you cannot use it anymore. You can use it for HMs and stuff, but you cannot use it in battle. If you ever white out in the middle of the run, in the middle of the game, meaning you your entire team falls and you are sent back to the Pokemon Center saying you have whited out, that is considered a game over. And you must restart from the beginning of the game. And the last thing I recommend to pretty much everyone who plays is the dupl is the dupes clause, the dupless clause. And it means if you already have that species of Pokemon, that evolutionary line, and it's the first thing you can encounter in a route, then you go ahead and, you go ahead and skip that. You go to the next encounter on that same route and get that instead. So let's say in route one you've caught your Rattata. In Route 2, the first Pokemon you see is another Rattata. Well, you've already got one, because you got it in the first route. So then you skip, and you go to the next encounter, which might be a Pidgey, or a Caterpie, so on and so forth. This means that you're not running around with a bunch of the same Pokemon. It means that when you fish, you don't just have, you know, 17 Magic Carp. Things like that. It makes it a lot more interesting. Um, and it also means you can plan around some routes by, depending on what Pokemon you've caught, you might be able to guarantee some encounters later on. Stuff like that. Adds some interesting gameplay. Now, if you do want to do some hardcore rules, which is what I play on typically, some of the rules are level caps, which is you make sure that you you are not any higher level than the next gym leader's ace Pokemon. For example, if I read Leaf Green, Brock's highest Pokemon, his Onyx, is level 14. So you are not allowed to start the Brock fight. You can level up in the middle of it, but you're not allowed to start the Brock fight at any higher than level 14. If your Pokemon is level 15 they or any higher than that, they must be considered unusable. You put them in the box until the next gym. So, if by, for example, your Squirtle goes to level 15 before you fight Brock. You are not allowed to use it until after you beat Brock and you're on to Misty, whose level cap is now 21. Which means that fifth level 15 Pokemon is now within the level cap and you can use it again. Lastly, or not lastly, I guess, <laughs> another couple of rules is no items in battle. So, no potions, no X speed, nothing in battle. You can use held items. You can give held items to Pokemon out before you battle and also use items like repels, escape ropes, stuff like that. Outside of battle, that is totally fine. Simply means no healing in the middle of a match, um, which is potions and stuff like that. And lastly, play on set mode. When you play on set mode, it means that when you defeat an enemy Pokemon, a trainer that has more than one Pokemon remaining, 
that instead of prompting you saying this poke this trainer is sending out bug catcher jimmy is sending out caterpie do you like do you want to switch instead of prompting you to switch it simply throws it out and whatever pokemon you already had out is going to stay and it means you have to switch and possibly take an attack this will get you in the habit of pivoting which is a very very common nuzlocke strategy for high level gameplay and the most you know efficient way to play the game any additional rules you might see on other people who play such as pokemon bands uh whether they use boosting i boosting um moves or not such as like belly drum swords dance all of that is up to the player and whatever they find the most fun ultimately a nuzlocke is trying to have fun with a children's game that's typically a little easy you know for people who you know, people like me who enjoy you know a little bit more challenge you know not not impossible but a little bit more challenge um a typical band pokemon is usually the box art legendaries that are usually too strong so emerald and uh, an emerald rayquaza comes a level 70 is a little too strong um kyogre groudon and ruby and sapphire and palkia dialga and platinum and 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 uh diamond and pearl you know the list goes on those ones that are a little too strong um, but usually other legendaries such as, you know, Zapdos and Fire Red and Leaf Green is up to the player. It's not, you know, quite as, a, um, quite as obliterating to the rest of the game, let's say. So now that we have the rules of the, out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at how Fire Emblem, or not Fire Emblem, sorry. I'm so used to Fire Emblem, you know, I didn't say anything. How Fire Red and Leaf Green, a Nuzlocke of that, is going to look for the average player. So let's first off take a look at the gyms and the important boss fights. What I say is boss fights is the gym leaders, the elite four. Your rival can fit in that category. The enemy, the uh, enemy rival team, whatever they are, Team Rocket in this case. Um, leaders like Giovanni could be boss fights as well. Typically, it's really the gym leaders and the elite four members who really um, control your level caps and stuff like that. So first off, your first gym is gym leader is Brock, the Rock type specialist, who's got an Onyx and Geodude. Then you jump into the water specialist Starmie, uh, Misty with her Starmie, which can be pretty tricky. You go into Lieutenant Surge with his three electric types. Then after that section, once you head towards the middle of the game, you hit Erica and her grass types. Then you have a bit of a, a bit of a stretch doing some Team Rocket stuff until you can choose between Koga and Sabrina, which one you fight first. Even in hardcore rule sets, their level caps are the exact same. And it's kind of an open world segment of Fire Red Leaf Green, so you can really pick whichever one you want to do. I usually typically go Koga, um, just because I feel like he's a little bit easier than Sabrina most of the time, but it depends on how your team is, is turning out, which one you're feeling more confident in, how your team is, is, is building up, stuff like that. After those two, and you get Surf, you go on over to Cinnabar Island and fight Blaine, the Fire Type Specialist, who usually isn't that hard. Nuzlocke's typically give you tons of Water Type Pokemon. And the last is Giovanni as a gym leader, and this fight is ridiculously easy no matter what. You really should not struggle. Fire Red Leaf Green really doesn't have a ton of very hard fights. Sabrina can be pretty tricky. Koga, not the easiest ever. Um, and Misty is, you know, a decent challenge. Misty and Brock are decent challenges depending on um, what starter you've picked and stuff like that. But really not too hard, making it really friendly to begin to beginner Nuzlocke people. Um, also, Fire Red Leaf Green likes to throw a lot of Pokemon at you that are good for the next gym. And I think that's another reason why I think it's very good to start with Nuzlocke and getting you in the habit of using Pokemon you're not familiar with, things like that. Then you go to the Elite Four, once you get past the Victory Road. Lorelei can be pretty tricky with her Water and Ice types. Bruno's really not too hard with his Fighting types and a couple of Onyxes, which doesn't really make that much sense. And Champ is a little strong, but you have to figure out a plan for that. Agatha can be a little annoying, but really isn't too much too hard of a fight. Um, Lance has got some heavy hitters, but he is very weak to a couple of move combinations. And then your rival fight, which will change depending on the starter, is not too difficult, but you just have some interesting coverage. So you'll have to plan your entire Elite Four team around that. And depending on what encounters you've gotten, depending on what Pokemon are still usable, still alive, could be pretty interesting. So let's take a look at it. let's take a look how the run's gonna go. So for Brock, you have your choice of starter, Bulbasaur. Charmander and Squirtle. For Brock in the first few gyms, specifically Charmander does not do nearly as good as the other two. I recommend to most people Bulbasaur is the best pick. All starters are pretty okay. There's not a lot of fire types, but there's not the most amazing type ever. There's a ton of water types that will replace your 
Squirtle and Blastoise later on in the game. Um, while there's a couple grass types to replace Ivysaur, it's just or Bulbasaur is just too good at the early game. I really recommend it to most players. Pick Bulbasaur; he will completely take care of Brock for you. Other encounters you're gonna get, you've got a couple different encounters. You've got four different routes to pick through a handful of these Pokemon, depending on what you encounter. Grass Rattata can be really effective. The birds can be okay. Mankey can be ni some nice coverage against Rock in case you pick the Charmander. Um, Butterfree and Beedrill are actually pretty okay Pokemon, and Pikachu's electric typing can be pretty, pretty neat, pretty useful. Once you go against Misty, you then get access to, you can buy a Magikarp in the Pokemon Center right outside of Mount Moon, which can evolve into a Gyarados, and even with level caps, you will have a Gyarados by Misty, which is an amazing, amazing Pokemon. The best Pokemon in all of Nuzlocke history, in my opinion. Um, you can also trade for a Farfetch and a Mr. Mime, Mr. Mime after you get cut. By the time you get to Misty, um, by the time you get to Lieutenant Surge, with a Spearow and an Abra, respectively. And you've got a handful of encounters, um, a ton of different encounters from this pool of Pokemon here. Diglas Cave only has a Diglar Dark Trio, so you're guaranteed that ground type, which is very useful for Lieutenant Surge. You can uh, go ahead and talk to Bill, get past the policeman who's guarding that one house, and go down to Vermilion City and get, get some more encounters. Um, allowing you some more Pokemon for Misty's Gym, and you've got a big handful of Pokemon here, including a couple grass types with Paris, Bellsprout, and Oddish, respectively, depending on what game version of the game you're playing, which can help you out against Misty in case you didn't have Ivysaur. Next up for Erica, once you get past Lieutenant Surge, you get access to Celadon City, where you can buy Pokemon in the game corner, or you can take the Eevee. Now remember, it is the first Pokemon in each area. Celadon City itself is an area on its own, and the Game Corner and the uh, Celadon con Condos, or the, the Mansion, whatever it's called, are still in Celadon City, so it's the same area. So you will have to pick between Eevee or a Pokemon you can buy. Either way, there's tons of great picks here. Eevee can evolve into three amazing Pokemon, Abra, Clefable, Dragonite, Pinsir, and Scyther, all very strong Pokemon, while Porygon 2, not really that that good. Wouldn't recommend buying it. We've got a couple more routes to get to and to get some more encounters for, including a couple fire types and even some more uh, flying types to get you prepared for Erica. Sets you up perfectly. And you've got some more old world encounters. And can you, in case you didn't want to buy the magic card from the um, merchant in that Pokemon Center outside of Mount Moon, you can catch another magic card and get your Gyarados that way. Right after you beat Erica, you can even do a little bit of this after or before you fight Erica, but timeline-wise, you're typically getting the getting done with the Pokemon Tower, maybe after Erica, using the Poker Flute, getting towards Fuchsia City. And that sets you up for a couple more encounters here. In Saffron City, you technically also only get one of these gift Pokemon, being Lapras, or one of the two fighting types you get from the Fighting Tojo which is either Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. I always recommend Hitmonlee. I think it's that spread out. It's just better overall. And even though Hitmonchan does get elemental punches, since there's no physical special split in this generation, it's not typically that great. And I recommend Hitmonlee all the way. Um, but Lapras is an amazing Pokemon as well. You can grab that in case you didn't evolve your Eevee into Vaporeon or looking for another very strong bulky water type. In the Safari Zone, you get one of many very useful Pokemon, Rhyhorn, one of the Nido King or Nido Queen lines, in case you didn't get that earlier. Paris, in case you didn't get that earlier. Executor. Venomoth, in case you haven't grabbed that yet. One of the few places to catch Dratini, in case you didn't buy it. Um, and also Tauros, Scyther, Pinsir, in case you didn't buy those. Kangaskhan, or Chansey. You can also trade on 118 um, with a Golduck or a Slowbro, depending on the game, for a Lickitung. Don't really recommend doing this. Those Both of those Pokemon are way more useful. And Lickitung will be, but if you insist, the option is there. And a couple more hand, a handful encounters of routes to get a couple Pokemon. If you want to repel and guarantee yourself a Marowak, you can repel through the Lavender Tower, um, skip all of the Ghastlies and Haunters, and then fight that little boss fight spirit of Marowak, um, which I actually might not be able to catch. I can't remember now off the top of my head, but you can pretty typically almost guarantee yourself. Marowak, which is very strong, or Haunter, Ghastly, Gengar, which can be very strong. Um, plenty of handful of Pokemon. You've already seen these before, but in case you didn't get them, get them again. And if you already have them, then it should give you an encounter for something else. 
Also, at this point, you can get access to both the good rod and the super rod, which gives you a ton of very, very good water type Pokemon. And this is where you get an abundance of water type Pokemon. Uh, depending on which game you are playing, you could get same things like Starmie or Cloyster, uh, Slowbro or Psyduck. You can get other Pokemon like Horsey, uh, Krabby, Sea King, Poliwag, Catch Gyarados in case you haven't gotten it yet, so on and so forth. After both Sabrina and Koga, you get access to Surf. You've got a couple more places you have, you, you can surf to that you haven't been to yet, such as the Power Plant, Seafoam Islands, and Pokemon Mansion on Sinbar Islands, as well as you can revive your fossil. Now, reviving your fossil, the best pick typically is grabbing the Old Amber from Future City and reviving the Aerodactyl. It's usually the best pick. However, Kabutops is another great option if you want to build a Swift Swim Rain Team, or if you just like it itself, and Omnistar is not too bad either. With all of the surfing routes, you get a ton of very, very useful Pokemon, as well as the legendaries in case you want to repel and not get an encounter through Seafone Islands and Power Plant, respectively. Get access to the Flying Birds with Stab Thunderbolt and Stab Ice Beam. Very, very useful, very good stats. Um, absolute amazing Pokemon for the rest of the game. If not that, a couple other good strong Pokemon you can get. Um, some others you haven't gotten if you buy surfing yet, like Golduck or Slowbro. The strong poison types in Muck and Weezing. You can possibly get a Magaton or another strong electric type in the power plant. In Seafoam Islands, you can maybe get a Dugong, a nice stab ice type Pokemon. As well as fishing and surfing encounters, you can get, again, this big pool of water type Pokemon, including Tentacool now, which is now available because of Surf. After Blaine, you can go to the Sevi Islands and prepare yourself for Giovanni the Final Gym. And on Sevi Islands, specifically Island 1, 2, and 3, We've got a couple different places, Treasure Beach, Kindle Road, Mount Ember, Cape Brink, Bond Bridge, and Berry Forest, as well as some more fishing and surfing around. And you can get access to like themed fire type Pokemon like Moltres, if you really need it. Um, some Maybe an end game fighting type Pokemon, a Machoke, um, Hypno if you haven't grabbed that before, a couple of familiar Pokemon. And again, the big, the big amount of, uh, big selection of surfing and fishing water type Pokemon available to you. And last, but not least, after you've beaten Giovanni and Route 23 and Victory Road on your way to Indigo Plateau to beat the game, you've got a couple more emergency encounters, things that can maybe fill, fill up your team, um, but you might be completed if your team already. Bunch of familiar Pokemon you've already seen before, maybe some you might not have gotten, such as Marowak or Primeape you might have not gotten earlier. And a few, just a few more fishing Pokemon, but you should most likely have all of these at this point already. You build your team with all the encounters you've gotten, beat the Elite Four, and win the game, complete your first Nuzlocke, and hopefully had a great time along the way. Now, one more reason I want to uh, reiterate why I think Fire and Leaf Green is such an easy game to Nuzlocke is because Nuzlocke's typically have a lot of randomness to it, but Fire and Leaf Green do not have too much randomness because they give you a ton, and I mean a ton of Pokemon that are 100% chances to get them. Which is the following. So, your starter, 100% chance to get them. You pick them along your run. Again, I think Venusaur is probably going to make the easiest run for you. However, I think Blastoise is probably the strongest throughout the entire game. And Charizard is not too great. Fire type just really isn't that useful and is very... Um, challenged at the first part of the game. Those first three gyms are pretty tricky. You can buy yourself a Magikarp, and even with the old rod, you guarantee yourself a Gyarados, which is fantastic with Dragon Dance and amazing stats and ability and Intimidate and great typing. As well as you in the game corner, you can also buy um, a bunch of these strong Pokemon. Alakazam is fantastic. Clefable is really good as well. Dragonite is a total powerhouse. These two bugs are pretty strong, even without Stab. And Porygon's not too great. Other than that, you've got some gift Pokemon. You can only get two of these six because you can only get one Aviolution in case you didn't buy one of these guys. And you can only get one of the two gifts, which is either one of the fighting types or Lapras. But all of these Pokemon are very, very, very excellent. Even Flareon, even though you might think, you know, fire typing and not having the best special attack might not be great. 130 attack with Shadow Ball and Dig. It's very, very strong. So, Vaporeon, Jolteon, very excellent Pokemon. Flareon, very good as well. In case you need a fighting type on your team, you can go ahead and grab Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan if you insist. And Lapras is an amazing encounter as well. 
Other than that, you have Static Encounters. These are Pokemon you are guaranteed to see. Doug Trio Gyarados also goes in this category as well. Doug Trio Diglett is in, the only Pokemon found in Diglett's Cave, so you're guaranteed that ground type. Um, I believe I actually could be wrong here, so let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong about this, but I believe you can catch the Marowak that is a ghost in the Pokemon Tower. If I'm wrong about that, then ignore this, um, but I believe you should be able to. And with a Thick Club, Marowak is very, very strong. There are two Snorlaxes laying on the road, so as long as you haven't grabbed them in the Pokemon on Route 110 or Run 12, respectively, you get yourself a Snorlax, who is an absolute monster. And you have the three legendary birds, which are all very useful. Zapdos, typically the best of the, of the bunch. Um, Articuno with the Stab Ice Beam is very, very useful. And Moltres is not too bad either. And then you also get to revive one fossil for your Sinbar Island encounter. Not the Pokemon Mansion, because that is a separate area. So Sinbar Island, you do get to either trade for one of the Pokemon, which is not that great, or revive a fossil. And I think the best of the fossils is Aerodactyl, with Kabutops not being too bad if, you're, if you want... You know, not another flying type on your team for any reason. And Omnistar is not too bad either. Anyways, that is going to wrap this video up. That's typically how a Fire Red Leaf Green Nuzlocke run is going to go. How you kind of plan for it. How it's going to look for you. And hopefully I've persuaded you to give it a shot. Nuzlocke's are a lot of fun. It's very interesting to use Pokemon you might not think about using. Such as Raticate. And in its gust ability. Or, you know, Arbok with Intimidate. Because it's really good. <laughs> if you know anything about my channel... Or uh, if you don't, you know, I, I love Intimidate, I love Arbok, and I love Mightyana for that reason, too. <laughs> Anyways, I hope this video has been interesting to you guys. I hope this gets you to try out Nuzlocke if you haven't. Or if you have a friend you want to recommend Nuzlocke, have them check out this video. Let them know how things kind of go. Let them, let them give, give them an idea of, you know, where, where to start, I guess. Anyways, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Again, this is your Night Protector Sane. Hope you guys all have a great night. Enjoy your summer. Be kind to one another, and take care. Goodbye, everybody.